Good morning, sub tours. Uh, short sales, what are they? How do they work? Are you familiar with short sales? We're going to talk about those today. So uh, we'll be back in about 45 seconds. <laughs> Good morning, sub tours. Welcome to this episode of Goat Talk. We're uh, coming to you from Apollo Beach, Florida. We're actually getting ready for our uh, sub two max uh, premium coaching group mastermind. We have three of those a year. And uh, this May's mastermind is going to be down here in Florida. So we're excited to have our students down here and have a really good time. Uh, if you're with us on Facebook or YouTube, YouTube especially, we would like to have you um, subscribe to our channel and uh, get notifications whenever we release new videos. We release several videos a week with some type of educational stuff for your business. It's absolutely free, so make sure you hit the notification bell when you're over there and uh, learn more about what we do and how you can buy houses. Uh, Make sure you subscribe and uh, introduce yourself. If you're here on Facebook this morning, uh, tell us who you are, where you're at, your favorite way to invest. Hello, Carlos. Good to see you. Corey, good to see you. Hope you and Allie are doing well today. Uh, if you don't know, my name is William Tingle. I've been a real estate investor, gosh, for almost 23 years now. Been buying a lot of houses subject to selling with seller financing. And it's primarily what we talk about. But today we're actually going to talk about short sales. Uh, we've got a short sale expert here, David Randolph. He's going to tell you guys how these things work and how you can make a ton of money uh, buying houses via short sale. Uh, if you're interested in lower cost coaching, more affordable coaching, maybe you're just dipping your toe in the creative finance pool. Uh, maybe you're a wholesaler and you want to learn what all this cash flow stuff that we talk about really is. You can check us out at $7 Coaching, the most affordable and best real estate coaching on the planet. And it's only $7 a month. So join us there. We're going to talk to David about short sales. And uh, we want to ask you to invite other investors, share our live stream, if you will. Uh, we want to invite you to ask questions during the presentation. We're going to get all of those things answered today. Uh, so we're not going to wait anymore. We're going to bring David in. Good morning, David. How are you? Good morning. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not in your mastermind because I'm stuck here in St. Louis, Missouri, where it's dreary, rainy and cold. And I was in Florida last week for a week or two and wish I had mm -hmm. stayed there. <laughs> Listen, we we've been traveling for the last year. We're on our epic road trip, Jody and I are. And we came to Florida for three months. We, we booked our reservation here in this Airbnb for three months. We loved it. We extended it two months. We just extended it for another eight months. I don't know if we're ever going to leave. Uh, we really <laughs> awesome. like this place. Yeah, don't, you love, love. don't you love real estate? <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it, it it's amazing. You know, we're really thinking back on it. Um, before I got into real estate, I hadn't had a vacation in 10 or 15 years. I couldn't afford to take a vacation. I had to work. You know, we have you ever done this? Have you ever in, in our industry, you could sell your vacations if you didn't want to take them. If you needed the money, you could sell them. And I always sold mine. <laughs> That's pitiful, isn't it? It is. Thinking, thinking about that, having to live that way. But yeah, va uh, real estate is great. Let's see who we got here. Kevin Strong, good to see you. Hey, Tim. Uh, Brad, good to see you guys this morning. Listen, we're going to talk about short sales today. David, tell us about yourself. I met David. We, we're both teachers over at REI USA. Stacy uh, runs a great organization over there. You guys ought to check it out. It's uh, it's really low cost. There's a lot of different teachers, but I met David over there and David's a short sale expert. And you guys, you guys know, I don't do short sales. 
So David's over here to talk about those today. Tell us about yourself, David, how you got started and how you became a short sale expert. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate you um, allowing me on your on your uh, Facebook Live to talk about this topic because I've been doing this for 11 years. Um, and so I, I guess some of my background, um, actually what I'll do is I'll just give you my quick 90 seconds. You remember those things that we used to have called uh, RIA meetings, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, we used to have them pre COVID and unfortunately mm. in St. Louis, we had seven groups and now only one of them still meets. Oh, and wow. it's quite sad that that mm -hmm. happened. But I'll give you my 90 second intro that I would do in the little breakout groups uh, mm -hmm. with the number on the wall you would go to. Uh, but uh, and so let's see if I can remember how this goes. So basically, hi, my name's David Randolph. Um, I'm a rehabber. I rehab about five to 10 houses a year. Mm -hmm. uh, all my renovated houses have sold in seven days or less, atlas price or higher. For now 11 years so they're drop dead gorgeous houses i make 50 to 150 thousand dollars profit on each 250 thousand dollar house no kidding mm -hmm. on it um i have over three million dollars in my retirement accounts that i lend out so i'm also a hard money lender so mm -hmm. my heart and passion is to uh, help the new rehabber get started so i'll lend you all the money to buy the house all the money to fix the house up all the money for the points on the loan and all the money for the monthly interest payments. You need zero dollars in it. Um, and then I also now started teaching short sales. Mm -hmm. uh, and so basically two years ago, I you know, did a presentation at a RIA group and it was recorded. And uh, ever since then, people have been saying, oh my gosh, you know, short sales, that's just amazing. But you know, where are they at? How do you find them? You know, what are they? And I'm like, what? You don't know what short sales are? And uh, so now I'm actually teaching people um, and uh, love doing it. I, uh, you know, William, I'll probably actually cut my rehabs down to less than five this year because mm -hmm. I love teaching short sales right. and to other students. But uh, basically, that's my kind of background. I'm a regular guy. I'm not a syndicator. I'm not part of a giant company. It's, it's me and my bookkeeper and assistant and, and wife and stuff like that. So I'm kind of a kind of a regular guy, but uh, I love real estate. I love what it's done for me. I mm -hmm. actually retired at the age of 42 from mm -hmm. my corporate job, homeschooled my kids, and then they graduated and went to college. And it's like, oops, what do mm -hmm. I do now? We went to a seminar uh, on real estate, fell in love with it. And the rest is the history that I just told you um, where I'm at now. But that's my my long, long, short background there. <laughs> right. So it sounds like we have a lot in common, David. Uh, you know, I got started in, in real estate and uh, homeschooled my kids and did that stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it really real estate makes a big difference in your life. and gives you a lot of freedom just really to do the stuff you want to do. So that's great. Um, hey, Farouk, good to see you. Gosh, we got Carlos Torres in here. He says uh, he's in your coaching group. So, uh, Carlos, I guess, uh, he, he said Davis, maybe I think he meant David. Uh, Hey, Phil, happy Cinco de Mayo to you. Uh, we got Mark Pantech in here. Good to see you as well. Uh, let's see. Okay. So David, let's, let's get started here for, for those that don't know, what is a short sale? Sure. Yeah. Um, and I want to kind of be clear on when I said that, you know, I make 50 to $150,000 profit. Um, on short sales. It is not a short sale listed on the MLS with a realtor. Okay. There's no realtor in this situation. You're reaching out with the homeowner and then negotiating with the bank. Okay. So this is not on the MLS. You're not looking for that classification. So I do want to you know, back up and make that kind of really clear. Um, you know, and you know, I'm doing this as the investor and the negotiator and the buyer all wrapped up into one with their various appropriate uh, entities. But just to give the quick definition of a short sale, um, you usually see that written out there as basically the homeowner uh, has a loan on his house with a bank. Uh, most uh, homes you know, have a loan on it, but they owe so much on the loan that if they tried to sell the house, it wouldn't pay off the loan. So that's you know what a definition of a short sale is. However, that's not correct. Okay, people need to understand the true definition of a short sale. The true definition is if the homeowner tries to sell their house as is right now, that it cannot pay off all debts. It's not the mortgage. It is the HOA lien. It is the federal tax lien. It is the judgments from credit cards. It's the second 
mortgage. So it's not just the loan from the bank, but rather it's all their debts and people forget mm -hmm. that. And those pile up. Usually if you haven't made your mortgage payment, you probably haven't paid your credit card either. Right. Okay. And so it's all debt. So that's your quick definition of a short sale. The homeowner can't sell their home to solve their situation and they don't know what to do. Right. Okay. Now, now before we came on today, you said something, um, that I thought was interesting that I hadn't really considered before. I just stay away from short sales. I've been involved in a couple in the past and they were long drawn out, painful experiences. I, I, I say all the time, I would rather straddle and slide down a razor blade than do a short sale. And that's how I feel about them. Okay. Uh, for that reason. But you know, you, you brought up something really interesting that if you want to keep a property and, and the, the scenario we talked about earlier was let's say that there's a property that's worth 200,000 that they owe between liens, mortgages, judgments, whatever they owe 300 and you're able to buy that property with a short sale, then you can borrow hard money or private money to actually purchase it. Uh, and then still use your normal exit strategy, which for me is seller financing. So let's talk a little bit about that and how that is different in a scenario from, let's say, a sub two investor. I'm out there. I'm looking for a house I can buy sub two. I find one that's got all these liens, judgments and everything else. What, how, what would that look like? How would I convert that to a deal that I could actually buy and still and still use my normal exit strategy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, sub two is a bigger category. Short sale is this little part of sub two right. that you don't like. Okay. But it's mm -hmm. kind of like going to, you know, McDonald's and getting your, your happy meal and you sit down and go, where's my French fries? Okay. You're missing a little important piece to the meal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of sub two and short sale is that. And what that basically is, like you just said, if they owe 300,000 on a house only worth 200, you probably don't want to take over those payments. Mm -hmm. Instead, if you know the steps on a short sale and they're so super simple, it's just that when you were doing them, William, it was a wild cowboy days. They mm -hmm. were unregulated. Um, it was uh, very difficult, but it's not like that today. It's very mm -hmm. well regulated. After 2015, they really got a lot of stuff put together with the regulations. And if you know the steps, it's very simple to do a short sale. But let's take that case of 300000 In a short sale, the banks are wanting to dump the houses right now because they've had 18 months of no payments and they need mm -hmm. to get the loan off their books. And so they'll easily take $50,000 for that loan. So you swing it from $300,000 owed to 50,000. Now you're interested. Okay. Now it's not a razor blade anymore. It's a, it's a yippee yahoo kind of situation. But the key is that the bank must get that 50,000 to them in cash. Mm -hmm. Okay. And whoa, that's not sub two. We don't do cash. Right. right. Uh, uh, but instead um, what you do is you can buy that house with a loan, hard money loan, or even mm -hmm. a private lender, or even a bank loan if you can close it in time and qualify. Mm -hmm. So here's the, the trick. So your people on here, write this down. On a short sale, you put your offer in cash as is. So write that down. The offer must be cash as is. However, when you go to closing, there's nothing that prevents you in the contract from coming to the closing with a loan as long as you don't change any other terms of the contract. That's standard on all MLS contracts across the country, pretty much, mm -hmm. except maybe, you know, who knows, California, you know, right. the, the, the country of California. But most every place in a purchase sale contract allows the buyer to come to closing with financing as long as they don't change the terms. So mm -hmm. therefore you put your offer and you negotiated that really low price of 50, but on the closing day, you come to that with that 50,000 with a hard money loan that you can refinance out to a local bank. You can mm -hmm. go to a local bank and they can actually come to the closing and, you know, provide that. Now you own that house. Okay. You know, with a small loan of $50,000, that you can wrap around to some buyer at say, you know, 150,000 for the house. Right. Okay. And you can mm -hmm. wrap that. There's lots of techniques. We could talk about that um, mm -hmm. there, but uh, you know, you could, uh, you know, sell it outright on owner financing and maybe take a $50,000 down payment would be one possibility. I, I buy houses for 29,600. 
that I sell for 275. I mean, you know, we're talking about really low cash offers um, on these short sales because the banks are panicking. They need an offer. They need them off their books. They were not allowed to foreclose, and mm -hmm. so they're 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 desperate right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, hey, Marcia, good to see you. Sarah, good to see you here this morning. Vincent, uh, Corey. Corey, good to see you here. Uh, listen, I'm going to ask you guys a favor. Uh, take a quick screenshot and share our live so we can get a few more people over here and, and teach them this morning. We'd love to have a few more investors here. We've got a couple of questions. If you guys have questions, uh, throw those in here. I've got a couple of questions about that last thing that you just said but we're going to try to get everybody's here first. We've got a Facebook user here. If you guys will go to uh, uh, streamyard.com slash Facebook, we'll be able to see who you are and we'll be able to call you by name. Uh, hi, David. Doesn't the short sale lender require the home to be listed on the MLS as part of their short sale process and the package they require from the borrower? Uh, yes and no. Um, there's two ways to do it. Um, I didn't want to pay the commission, right? So I developed a set of paperwork that I would give to the bank. So I would turn in a purchase sale contract of my own type, an investor type contract to the bank. Then the bank would, you know, come back and they, you know, might talk about, you know, needing it on the MLS or have a listing agreement or other things like that. And so for a long time, I would go through with a series of documents that would kind of end up to the point where it would say, uh, sure, absolutely. Uh, we can put it on the MLS. We'll just have to reduce your net by 6%. And then all of a sudden the bank goes, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute, hold on. You know, we, we actually have it appraised and, and already. So, and we have an offer for that price. You're right. There's actually no real reason, you know, to do that, and which will drop our net down. And so uh, mm -hmm. probably 90% of the time they would say, you don't need to have it on the MLS because you went far enough through the process where they've done the appraisal, uh, BPO, you know, they've determined the value of the house. And that's really all they want is they want to have the value of the house match the offer. You know, the two mm -hmm. have to be, you know, reasonably close with each other. Now, I will tell you, uh, William, in the last three years, I've gotten kind of lazy with even that. And so it's just easier for me to have a, real, a realtor on my team who will do the listing. But it's not, mm -hmm. uh, not on the MLS when I find it, mm -hmm. but rather I put it on the MLS. So now, yeah. To answer that question, the only one that really technically requires that is the FHA. That's a government loan, and they're pretty hard about wanting to have that on the MLS. They actually even want it active for 15 days. But remember, you already have the buyer up front. The 15 mm -hmm. days active is meaningless. Um, you know, something really nice about short sales, William, is two points. One is that there are no other buyers on the mm -hmm. house. So, you know, you got, you know, your people complain about buying from wholesalers uh, and they complain about buying off the MLS. There's too many other buyers. There are no other buyers on a short sale. There are none. It's you. Second thing is the homeowner doesn't care what the price is. It's underwater. They're not going to get any money. OK, you're going to get the bank to pay them some money. Uh, so they don't care what the sales price is on it. So basically anything you do on the MLS is just for the pure dog and pony show. OK, that right. you might need based on the bank and what they need. Right. Uh, OK. All right. So you're going to have to help me with this. Walk me through a scenario where there's a property that's worth. You, you just gave an example of buying a house for 50 and selling it on a wrap for 150. And, and I'm assuming that's you have an example of that where that worked. And these people, owe, and I'm guessing that's recent, that's during COVID, that's during, unless you're buying in markets in pockets where they're not having that kind of appreciation, how in the heck do you find a scenario where let's say a house is legitimately worth 150 and you get a bank to take a $50,000 offer for that? How, how does that play out? Um, well, yeah, there's a long process to it. And we could like do an entire one hour thing on mm -hmm. the actual paperwork and how that's right. submitted. But, you know, it, it, the kind of overall thing is, you know, it's got to look like a duck and quack like a duck. Mm -hmm. OK, so your very right. first list price when you do put that on the MLS, that list price amount. See, realtors make this huge mistake and a disservice to homeowners. They 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 have a friend, a client, a person. 
uh, who's in trouble. They're going to have a foreclosure coming up and, and, and they basically need to try to sell the house. And so the realtor puts the home listed at what the loan value is. Well, right. buyers don't care what the loan value is. OK, or, or even worse, there's no foreclosure date. It sits on the market for nine months at the loan value that they can't sell. So instead, what you do is you, you have to know what the price listed for the house should be. OK, mm -hmm. so now you're going to do certain things to come up with that list price. So you started to make the duck look like there's a couple feathers in it. OK, the house mm -hmm. must be worth what that listing price is because it was listed for sale at that. Somebody mm -hmm. calculated that. So now the bank is starting to believe that it's worth $50,000. That's right. step one. And it goes through a lot of other steps, basically, which would include such things as a repair estimate. What does it take to bring that house up you know, to value? Um, and then it's also meeting the appraiser, the BPO agent at the house, uh, making sure that they come into the house and so basically, you know, you're making sure that they see everything that is wrong with the house and doing mm -hmm. a determination of what's called an interior BPO, you know, what that actual condition of the home is. Now, let's take the situation in your city or your county. Let's say where here's a situation where the short sale doesn't work. If you're mm -hmm. in your city or your county and you have, say, a, a one mile radius and the um, dollars per square foot, the ARV or the sold price of the homes were identical. They're all $100 per square foot. That would be very difficult to do a short sale because in a short sale, guess what you're presenting to the bank, to the BPO agent? You've got a range of $50 a square foot to $150. You're going to show them comps for the $50 per square foot homes, and then you're going to subtract your repair estimate you know, from that. Okay. Now, with all that said, you're not doing anything but presenting that to the bank the bpo agent appraiser comes to the house and he makes his own determination okay he's got the same mm -hmm. MLS that you do he's got the same comps but are people human okay are mm -hmm. they lazy is this guy only being paid fifty dollars is he going to go through 20 sold homes and find out that that home was maybe really worth 150 possibly right. no they don't. OK, they're going to go, oh, look, he gave me some comps here. They look reasonable to me. OK, and then they're going to turn in a price. Now, what happens after that? That's not what the bank wants for it. OK, it's considerably less than the valuation. And there's mm -hmm. many reasons for that, including the fact that in a non-performing loan, they've got to take off 15 times. So if they're owed one hundred thousand, they've got to take one and a half million dollars off of their books. OK. They would much rather take fifty thousand dollars for that, so they can go back out and loan five hundred, you know, half a million or a million. That's mm -hmm. what they're looking at. Okay, right. they're not looking at getting the actual appraised value. They need that, yes, mm -hmm. but it's a percentage, and and I even know the percentages that the bank will take. You know, if, mm -hmm. you know, if we want to give that away, we can give that away. You know, uh, you know, or people can contact me directly, and I'll tell you exactly what the percentages are for FHA. Right. You know, Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae, you know, I know what those numbers, those percentages mm -hmm. are. Right. Okay. All right. Kevin's got a question. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, can you refinance right after closing? Some lenders have seasoning requirements. Uh, no, absolutely. Not in certain cases. So here, let's, let's look at that refinance. Uh, most people would ask the question, can I wholesale? Okay, so I'll wrap that answer. I'll, I'll wrap both questions into that before it's even asked. You know, can I wholesale a short sale? Okay, um, or in the case, the easier one of can I refinance after closing? Now, absolutely, you own the house, uh, mm -hmm. so you can refinance. Uh, you know, with anybody you want. The seasoning requirement is only a function of your credit score and who you're asking for a lender. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. You know, if you go to a local regional bank, they don't have seasoning requirements. If you go to Bank of America for a refinancing loan, they may say, yes, we need to have you own it for one year. So it's your credit score versus the lender that you're seeking on the mm -hmm. refinance side. Uh, William, if you want me to talk about the wholesale, I can or um, I can just answer the question asked there. I'll tell you, I, our get around for any seasoning requirement on wholesaling has always been just to write your contract in an LLC and just sell your interest in the LLC. Uh, that way, you know, you can wholesale the deal. 
um, and, and you show a consulting fee or whatever on a HUD, or you can be paid outside of closing. So, I mean, I don't know how you do it, but that's been hours for any, any contract with an REO or anything else that wouldn't allow a flip. Uh, what do you, how do you handle it? Is it different or what do you do? For me? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm rehabbing most of my houses, so I'm not mm -hmm. refinancing. Well, you're actually closing on them. I mean, and so you're right. talking about, and I guess that would answer my earlier question. When you're talking about how you get uh, a house that's legitimately worth 150 or 200, you get the banks take fifty thousand dollars. You're only buying houses that need significant rehab. Oh, absolutely not. No yeah. way. So okay. I, I said I make fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars profit on just right. a little, little two hundred. I actually, Jared, if you break it down, I wholesale mm -hmm. houses for 80 grand. Mm -hmm. I make $150,000 if I rehab it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so on, a, so you can do short sales on pretty houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. need nothing. I, I got a great, uh, I'm actually doing this for our REI USA this Saturday. I don't know if you put that out there to, to mm -hmm. your group to invite them to that right. free Saturday presentation. Yeah. Uh, but basically, mm -hmm. I'm speaking and my presentation, William, is going to be how I took a house on a short sale that I bought for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I, I put in new outlets in the basement because kids stole the white outlets and wires were hanging out and I was embarrassed. So I put in white outlets. OK, and I sold the home for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, bought it mm -hmm. for two fifty, sold it for three fifty. That was a short sale. And I did mm -hmm. that in my Roth IRA. Oh, yeah tax free mm -hmm. forever. So, um, so no, um, you know, they don't have, they don't have to be houses that need work. They can be, and you'll make mm -hmm. the $150,000 number right. you know, by fixing them up, but you know, you can do pretty houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys, if you have questions, let us know. Now, David's here to answer your short sale questions this morning. Hey, Justin, good to see you. Uh, so it, it has been years since I was involved in a short sale. What, what do, you, what do you see, David, is the typical timeline now from start to finish? If I if I meet with a seller today, maybe they gave me a call off some marketing. I go out, meet with them, take a look. They've got liens, judgments. They owe way more than the house is worth. I say, OK, this is a short sale candidate. Uh, I guess the first step is to, to order that from their, their lender. But what's the typical time frame from that moment until you can wrap a short sale up? Uh, yeah, it's very, very long. You have to figure out three to six months. Now, what I tell people is, hey, that's not a big deal. Don't quit your day job. Just build up a backlog. When you get about 10 or 12 of them and then you start doing a rehab, then quit your job. OK, mm -hmm. but just build up that backlog while you're doing sub two deals, while you're doing wholesale. Just, you know, don't quit because uh, mm -hmm. short sales don't take very much time at all. So just build up that backlog. Then every month, one's cranking up. So three mm -hmm. to six months. But to give you a perspective, I tried to do a short sale recently as quickly as possible mm -hmm. um, because I was doing Zoom recordings on the entire process for my coaching students. So I, I needed a video of uh, the entire, every single step, even in my pajamas, okay, mm -hmm. at night, typing up the listening agreement and the documents mm -hmm. needed. Uh, and that was done in two months. So mm -hmm. I was able to do an entire short sale from start to finish in two months time frame. Now, I will tell you that um, I didn't get the lowest price that I could have. So I bought this house for $54,000. I could have gotten it for 42, but I didn't spend the time to do an extra dispute with the bank. So you can dispute the value, okay, mm -hmm. as many times as you as you want. I did not do uh, very many disputes, so I stopped at 54,000 because I needed the video, and it was a two month video, and it was 22 hours. That was the total amount of time put on that over two months was just only 22 hours. Now, you know, I uh, you know you don't have to cry for me because you know. Uh, I, you know, I got it for 54 and could have got it for 42. I put 30,000 into it and it didn't need mm -hmm. 30,000. Remember, mm -hmm. well, I'm a rehabber and, I, mm -hmm. and so I don't, you know, hammer is a nail and I'm a nail. And so I, I like to do the rehab, but I did a $30,000 rehab on that $54,000 house. So I had 84 in it. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. just, you know, a couple of months back, I sold that thing for 220, mm -hmm. 220 had, had 84 in it. And sold it for 220. So don't cry for me that I only got it for 54 and could have got it for 42. Okay, <laughs> but you know that's three to six months. 
Yeah, there have been times when the family has a kid in high school and they want to graduate. Mm -hmm. So I will drag it out on the other side and I'll drag it out for nine months or a year. I don't care when I get the house. I'm not moving into it. If I can help the family out and they want their kid to graduate in that high school, then I will mess the bank up on, on my side and right. delay things and, and do it. But I that's a good number, especially if you're not experienced. Right. You know, most investors, when they think of short sales, if they know what they are, uh, they think of just a, a deal where maybe the, the property. I mean, I think most of investors that have been around for a while think, you know, 2009, 2010, the property values have all dropped. That's a short sale. The house was worth 300. Now it's worth 200. They still owe three. But, you know, the market's just been so crazy the last couple of years. You don't find as many houses that aren't worth the value anymore. The perceived value, because people are nuts, man. I mean, it's so much, it's tulip mania. And if you don't know what that is, Google it. It's crazy. But no. so, how are you finding most short sale deals currently made? Same okay. scenario, something different. <laughs> William, everybody thinks what you just said and right. they're all wrong. Right. Okay. Here's what they don't know. Okay. So, I'm, my original background is engineering. I'm a data junkie nerd. I follow statistics. I analyze things. Uh, you know, I've got the, that one uh, guy that's on here as part of my, I got a monthly group coaching call on Facebook, mm -hmm. short, uh, short sale profits. And mm -hmm. I post articles on there all the time about inside data. And so I'll answer your question in this regard. One, there's a Black Knight data, a company mm -hmm. called Black Knight. And they, put out right. stuff. they put out just recently a study over 30 years, 30 year study of foreclosures. And what they found was that if you took for all those foreclosures and of those homes that had 40 percent equity in their house, they could have snapped their fingers and sold it instantly because they had 40 percent equity. One third of those failed to do that. One third of those went to actual foreclosure because it's a function of the homeowner, their mentality and their right. position in life. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the value of the home. Right. whatsoever. So that's one key statistic. Here's another one. Actually, let me rephrase that. That was the MBA that put out that study, Mortgage mm -hmm. Board Bankers Association. Uh, right. This other fact is what's more is also important. Black Knight did come out with this study. Now, I'll admit that this is, this is from last year. OK, I, we don't have it for this year, but they came out with a study and they basically looked at all these homes that are in the moratorium, okay? There's like mm -hmm. 2 million homes at the time in the mor mortgage moratorium. They looked at those and they found out uh, that, uh, well, first of all, you know, at the time, 5% of all FHA loans in America were delinquent, okay? 5%. Mm -hmm. it's, that's a crazy huge number in America. And But basically out of the FHA loans, 30% were underwater, 30%. So you say that, you know, the market's rising and it's going up every, well, here's what people forget. It's a mathematical equation. A short sale is two numbers being subtracted. What do they owe and what's it worth? Uh -huh. And so you're going to say to me, like you just did in the rest of America, what it's worth has been going up. But what uh -huh. you forget for two years now, they haven't paid, made any payments. The debt's been rising faster. It's also been right. rising. Uh, then you throw in uh, the fact that, you know, even a short sale, on an FHA, the minute they bought the home, it became a short sale because they only put down three and a half percent in commission six. Right. Okay. So FHA. So that's a, if your uh, viewers want to write down this tip or trick. OK, mm -hmm. target FHA loans mm -hmm. okay, for your short sale, you know, avenue with it. Mm -hmm. OK, good information. Corey has a question. Let's uh, see if we can get this up here. Uh, what's the best way to target leads for short sales? Okay, sounds like you just gave us one FHA loans. Anything specific or just the usual marketing efforts? Do you do something special to uh, snuff out the, F the FHA, Absolutely. the uh, short sale stuff? Absolutely. I have a 30% response rate on my direct mail marketing. And mm -hmm. as you know, in real estate, the normal response rate is 3%. Mm -hmm. With right. my marketing that I use for short sales, it's a 30% response rate. Um, and so, uh, you know, William, we ought to just do another session where I just do a presentation on this very topic and go through exactly how to do it. Because I could show you um, in a presentation how, but I will answer the question verbally. 
Uh, yeah. And so what you want to do is um, you want to target the county legal newspaper. So mm -hmm. in a, all across the United States, every single foreclosure, let me just back up. Um, Corey, you want to target foreclosure, people that are in foreclosure, because mm -hmm. that's the lowest hanging fruit. They're desperate. They, mm -hmm. That's why it's 30% response rate. They are desperate. Uh, what you do is you target those in foreclosure. Now, this is what most people don't know. Uh, we don't go to www.foreclosureforeclosureme.com. That's not how we do it. I teach my people to go to the county legal newspaper. Right. So all across the United States, every foreclosure, judicial or non-judicial, must oh be posted in the county legal newspaper. And right. I show you how to get that Internet site and how to get that data off of there. And that's mm. something that, you know, we could do a presentation on someday. Okay. Well, guys, let us know. Would you like to have David come back and actually just do a presentation, like a, a mini workshop on, on some of these questions? Uh, let us know. Tell us, yes, bring David back and uh, we'll see if we can get that done. Uh, let's see, Carlos, how are you getting short sale leads? There's 14 foreclosures, pre-foreclosures in my county right now, but those are rising, Carlos. I'm telling you, we drove for dollars yesterday, foreclosures uh, here in, in Florida. And even after heavy filtering, we still had, gosh, it was about 70. Uh, so, I mean, they're they're really rising. Pretty yeah, quickly. let me give you my perspective on that, uh, Carlos. So, um you heard my my numbers. Uh, I said that I've got over three million in my retirement accounts. I lend out. Right. Uh, and, and so I've made a lot of money in short sales over the past 11 years. And and keep in mind, actually, that's that's money that my wife didn't get. OK, that made it to my IRA. I have made a lot more money in short sales over the years than my wife spent. But basically um, in that scenario, pre pandemic in my county, there were only 40 foreclosures per month. So I have built what you just heard in my intro based on simply 40 foreclosures a month. You just need one a month. Mm -hmm. And then 39 went to waste. The next month, there's another 40. OK. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And so 14 is more than enough for you. And I will say that um, if you're at as high as 14, that's really uh, amazing because the moratorium had forbid any foreclosures. And now the foreclosure moratorium ended in August of 20. 21 and each mm -hmm. month the bank is ramping up to have the right. ability to do the foreclosures so that's why william has identified already that those are increasing mm -hmm. about 30 percent per month mm -hmm. which is you know a huge number we're not back to where we were pre-pandemic right. on foreclosures yet but here's the, the the other thing to keep in mind uh just two weeks ago they came out with this statistic that there are still 1.5 million homeowners that are seriously delinquent from the moratorium that are still not in a workout plan or a system that are still 18 months behind. Those are going to be coming through the system over the months and years coming up with it. So now is definitely time to put this, you know, this uh, uh, package of French fries in your meal, mm. you know, with sub two, you know, because it's going to start to become, you know, uh, a bigger part of your meal pretty soon in the sub two uh, area, especially if, prices turn down. Mm -hmm. right. David, you just said something very interesting. <laughs> I was like, you mean you don't have to buy 25 or 50 or a hundred houses a month to be a successful real estate <laughs> investor? Man, I get so tired of that stuff. You go through your, your feed all the time. You got all these ads from these guys. We've got 50 deals in our pipeline right now. And I haven't talked to a single seller and I haven't looked at a single house. We've got an acquisitions team and a this and a that. Oh, well, it's worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, $5,000 a month marketing budget. I'm oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, I would scare me to death. You know, <laughs> how much right, does it cost man. to mail 40 letters? All these That's hustlers. My marketing budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let's see what we got. We got a bunch of questions coming in. Justin, can you short sell a reverse mortgage? Excellent question. Uh, first of all, can we can we be vulgar on 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 this pre, on this live or not? Did well, they censor vulgar. You? I don't know what what's. Well, the, let me let's see if they bleep it out. <laughs> but okay, I'm just gonna say it. Reverse mortgages suck. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't like them. Um, they're not. Uh, yes, you can do a short sale in a reverse mortgage, but here's why you don't want to do it. Okay. 
And the reason is, I told you about these secret percentages that the bank will accept for the appraised value. Well, for reverse mortgage, it's 95% of the appraised value. When, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to pay 95% of the appraised value? Now, granted, my appraised value will be a very, very low number, and I'll still make $50,000, okay, mm -hmm. on it easily, okay? But mm -hmm. if I took that exact same house for that exact same appraisal, I know that Fannie Mae will take 80.4%. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference between 95. I've lost 15% of that appraised value. So why mm -hmm. waste your time doing that? Now, the only reason to do that is one, to help the family out, which is why you want to do it. Okay. I, you, I started this, my wife and I did, to help families out in 2009 in a crisis mm -hmm. with it and stuff. So you could help the family out with it. Um, you know, and there are a large percentage of the short sales today um, are reverse mortgages and um, um, probate, you know, people that have passed away with it. And so you may kind of be seeing a lot of those and be stuck maybe having to do a short sale on a reverse mortgage. But definitely call me, contact me uh, and ask questions about it because it is a different process, you know, than, than the normal uh, nationwide uh, short sale process for a normal loan. But you can do a short sale. Okay. Uh, Justin had another question. Can you do a short sale with a personal rep <laughs> of an estate? Yeah. You got a smart crowd here. I tell you, man, you know, with it, uh, I don't need a presentation. They're going to leave me right down the thing. <laughs> you know, we can throw up some slides to go with it. And they'll, they'll yep. think you paid these people to prompt me, but anyway, <laughs> I want to do a presentation that, you know, it's uh, there's a lot more stuff that I could give them than verbally, but anyway, mm -hmm. so, um, so the personal rep of an estate. So that is a what's called probate. That's what called a deceased person. Someone has mm -hmm. died. So the homeowner had the loan and they died. And now the heirs are trying to figure out what they do. And I will tell you, it's not always a personal rep of the estate because some people don't even consider there to be an estate or a will, but yet you still have to deal with the heirs. And so you absolutely can do the short sale and you almost have to do the short sale. And here's why. If you don't, the bank has the house's collateral. They also have the right to go to after the estate. So let's mm -hmm. say the estate has a million dollars in it and the house is underwater. OK, and the bank knows that the estate has uh, checking accounts, mutual funds and other money. They can get that deficiency, the amount owed from the rest of the estate. So you mm -hmm. want to do a short sale so they don't take the heirs money and mm -hmm. cash. So there's right. very good reasons to talk to the personal rep. You know, mm -hmm. to do that. Now, don't scare them and say that, you know, you'll have a foreclosure on your record because their personal rep will mm -hmm. not have a foreclosure on their right. record. The deceased person will. And right. they don't care about a foreclosure right. on credit score. But the estate and the heirs do care about having to pay all that money back mm -hmm. with it. So you absolutely can do right. that with, with the heir. Let me rephrase it. You do the you do it with the heir. And, and so if there is no probate or estate, then there's a method too long to go into here that you can get the heir made to be the owner of the home. And then you do the short sale with the heir, even though there's no estate or personal rep. Gotcha. OK, you guys bring your questions. We've got a little bit of time left. Uh, we have a Facebook user. How likely can you buy short, a short sale house that doesn't require rehab? And I know David said earlier, he does pretty house short sales. How does that work typically? How, what scenarios do you see where, where you're able to pick up a nice house um, at a short sale? I would say about 30% of the short sales I do are perfectly nice houses that need almost mm -hmm. no work uh, whatsoever. Um, you know, I've got a, a presentation with multiple examples, mm -hmm. um, you know, of houses um, you know, that you could look at with the addresses and stuff like that. And you can see, um, and so, uh, the, the percentage number is about one third, but I think that the key is that, you know, when someone responds to a marketing letter, don't pre-screen them from the perspective of it being a pretty house or, or an ugly house, uh, try the short sale anyway. For many years, I just thought that same thing. It had to be a, a rehab or a hoarder house or in bad shape. And then 2015, I said, you know what? I'm going to waste my time on a very nice house. And mm -hmm. so this house was only eight years old, had granite countertops, wood floors. Um, and I did the short sale and I bought it for $110,000. Um, and I did um, put in some new carpet upstairs, uh, but I sold it for two hundred and thirty. 
bought it for 110, sold it for 230. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, and so I just did very little work, you know, to that house. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a question of the comps and if there's a range of comps in the location, you know, like I say, if all comps sold at hundred dollars a square foot, it's really hard to show the, the appraiser low values when they're all identical values. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, then you don't have a, a very good short sale, but um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you definitely don't want to screen those out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So Marcia, Tim, Brad, Corey, Carlos, Steve, uh, all of these guys are saying, yes, yes. Bring David back. So David, we're going to uh, talk with you when we end this call today about uh, coming back and doing a presentation. Uh, Vincent says, can you briefly tell us the rules when using your IRA for lending? Uh, okay. So you're asking me about me lending from my IRA. So, um, I am going to lend money out of my IRA. It means that I cannot lend to somebody that I'm related to, and I cannot lend to somebody that works for me and receives more than 10% of my, um, you know, uh, they're not an employee who I'm paying more than 10% of the gross salaries to who work for me uh, with it. So basically you can't lend to uh, a, a relative with it. And you, um, you know, I mean, I guess that's really about it. There's a, you know, not really much more than that. I mean, you follow the same rules of a promissory note, um, a mortgage or a deed of trust, and, and you have all that done through a title company uh, with it like that. But, you know, on the lending side, um, you know, I think that I think the, the bigger problem is if you try to buy a house in your IRA, that's where the rules get very dangerous and, and very uh, important on what you do, because you're not allowed to paint the house or do any work in it. When, when I'm a lender, I'm not going to go paint the house. It's not my house. I lend it mm -hmm. to a rehabber uh, with it. So the rules are don't lend to a, a relative, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Rini asks, what about the VA? They're government backed loans. Uh, so you pay the loss to the lender. Not sure exactly what that means. Um, well, asking about VA loans and short sales, I guess, basically. Yeah, I can, I can answer that or, and she can repost more, more detail to okay. it. But, but yeah, I mean, VA is just one of the seven or eight types of loans. You got Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, you know, FHA, you know, and, and those kinds. So VA is just one particular kind. Um, what two things happen in a VA uh, is that um, is that normally a VA, a vet, can qualify for a loan of like say five hundred thousand dollars. And let's say they get they have a house, you know, for a um, hundred thousand, and they take a loss of fifty. So so I buy it. It's, it the loan is one hundred. I buy it for fifty. That means there was a loss of fifty thousand dollars. Okay, that theoretically would take their five hundred thousand dollar limit and make it four fifty. So if they went out and bought a new house, they couldn't buy a five hundred thousand dollar house. They could only buy a four hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only little caveat that you may or may not been asking on VA. If that wasn't it, uh, repost your question. So, so if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is. Uh, VA entitlement across almost every county in the United States right now, somewhere north of half a million dollars. So if, 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 a v, if a person with a VA loan is ever in a short sale, the amount of the deficiency is removed from their entitlement forever? Well, yes and no. That's the way it was. Um, I just read something recently that the that the VA removed the $500,000 limit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I just said probably does not even apply today. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they removed the $500,000 limit mainly because of what you said. Okay. It's hard to find houses under. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they just eliminated it. So more likely that deficiency then doesn't even play a part. Right. Uh, but the key to the deficiency that you have to keep in mind is that, you know, you're getting that wiped out when you're doing a short sale. Never, Mm -hmm. ever do a short sale with a homeowner where the bank issues an approval letter saying that there's a deficiency that they're going to come after for the homeowner. You never do that. 
You cannot right. buy a house, make $150,000 profit, and know that the bank is pursuing the homeowner for the deficiency right. of the loan, which is what was owed minus what it was sold for. You're a very low price. That's a deficiency. In every short sale I've ever done, mm -hmm. the approval letter says deficiency is now zero. You right, do it, right. Okay? Well, that's, that's, that's almost something. I mean, I've always heard this about short sales. You want to make sure that that's in the paperwork that that they can't come after the homeowner for a deficiency. Absolutely. You cannot sit there with the homeowner. You have to have integrity. OK. Right. Uh, and so I tell them that right up front. I say I will not do the short sale. Right. I won't do it if that mm -hmm. happens. And I had a case where that actually happened. It's a very interesting one because it was a short sale with the uh, the, the VP of Bank of America. OK. <laughs> and, and, and I mm -hmm. said, are you allowed to do a short sale? You, mm -hmm. You're the VP of Bank of America. Right. And, and, and the lady said, oh, no, but my loan's not with Bank of America. It's with the credit <laughs> union. And so I said, okay, good, good. Because I also had thoughts yeah. like, do I want to do this? I mean, this mm -hmm. is the monster, Bank of America, right? right. You're just mm -hmm. screwing people left and right back then. Right. But anyway, the point is I did the whole process, got to the end, and because it was a credit union, they, they basically had a deficiency on the approval letter and i went to the lady and said i can't buy the house we have to cancel the short sale i told you that i wouldn't that i wouldn't do this and make money and mm -hmm. have you have a deficiency she said right. no 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 i want you to go through with it anyway mm -hmm. uh, and i said no i said that i wouldn't and i have integrity and she's no no mm -hmm. go through with it her attorney writes me a letter and mm -hmm. says i am directing you to go through with the short sale okay and her thought was they would do the short sale and they would just file bankruptcy to wipe mm -hmm. out the deficiency. That is very true, but you still have to stay to your word. So what right. I did instead was I went back to the credit union and I said, no, we'll have to cancel the short sale. Uh, the homeowner cannot accept a deficiency. She's had too many problems in her life. She doesn't want problems going forward. Right. What would it take to remove the deficiency? And they mm -hmm. said, pay us $25,000 more. Mm -hmm. I said, done. So I increased my offer by $25,000 and removed the deficiency. Mm -hmm. So never, ever do a short sale with a deficiency. Do everything right. you can to get out of it. Now, don't cry for me because that mm -hmm. was that house I did for $100,000 mm -hmm. profit. So I had $125,000, paid twenty five dollars and knocked right. my profit to only $100,000. Right. So cry for me, but never, ever allow the deficiency right. to go through. But I think that's probably a lot of states don't allow a deficiency judgment do they i mean no, actually, they, they, pay foreclosure. I mean, they actually do there's only, really the, the the big state you want to talk about the uh, state level is mm -hmm. arizona oh arizona really doesn't <laughs> have one but you know uh you know even illinois i mean you know many states do missouri right. uh they have seven years to come get the money from you mm -hmm. in other states it's one year uh in other states they have to go towards judicial action you right. know to recover the money but i would say 90 percent of the states have an ability to come after that amount mm -hmm. okay now that may require them to take additional steps mm -hmm. with it okay but um you know most states actually can pursue that so that's why you yeah. you need to make sure it's it's removed mm -hmm. and i'll tell you just to be open with you i mean you want to scare the homeowner with it you, you want to use that in your marketing missouri's mm -hmm. a a seven-year deficiency state they got seven years to come get the money from you that's true and i tell them that but you know, in practicality, you know, the banks are very easy to remove the deficiency okay, right. and stuff like that. So, you know, um, so, you know, it, it's not common for the banks to be pursuing people. Right. OK, so uh, Rini asked how to find out about properties in probate. Rini, you want to do that at your county courthouse. Uh, that's where you'll get your probate leads. I know you can buy lists, but uh, by the time that, this is what I tell all of you guys, you, you, you know this, if, if you want the absolute freshest leads, you want to get those yourself and you can get most everything at the county courthouse level. If you buy a list, someone else went and gathered the information, it's being sold to 10 million other investors. But if you either find your county website, go directly to your county courthouse, you can, uh, you know, there's Freedom of Information Act, get behind the counters, what we used to call it. And, uh, you know, whether that's eviction stuff, foreclosure, list pendants, uh, or probate, you can get that at your courthouse. David, do you have anything to add to that? 
No, I mean, that's that's really it. Um, just, you know, keep in mind, even with the you know probate is one method of buying houses, mm -hmm. even if it's not a short sale, be yeah. cognitive of the family and all the other rules that, that go with that. Just know that, you know, you will basically see that come up on the foreclosure list anyway. Mm -hmm. OK. And at that point, that's where they're the most motivated uh, anyway. Um, yeah. and stuff. Now, if you want to pre-market to them, you know, that's that's certainly, you know, fine to do. Uh, with it. Right. Okay. Uh, Justin had another question. Is there an incentive you can offer the owner to do a short sale other than the thousand dollars that the bank offers? Great question, man. I love your group. <laughs> you know, these, these guys, guys are, are sharp. Now. They are darn yeah. sharp. I mean, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, so first of all, it's not a thousand dollars though. It's $3,000. So mm -hmm. FHA is 3000. Fannie Mae is between 1500 and 3000. I've had an occasional $10,000. And so it's all depends on the investor and the bank. And so you have to find that out once you uh, get the authorization form sent into the bank and ask those kinds of questions. But to answer the incentive to offer the homeowner, no, no, no. OK, mm -hmm. you cannot offer. It's called bribery. Mm -hmm. It's fraud. So right. let's go backwards What the law. Let's let's say what the federal law states and we'll go backwards with it. The federal law says that if you rent the home back to the homeowner after the short sale, or you sell the home back to the homeowner after the short sale, you both go to jail, literally jail. Okay. Because it's fraud. You committed fraud on the bank. Okay. To do that. Now let's go back to the incentive that you offer the homeowner to do the short sale. Um, no, you shouldn't do that because while it's not exactly federal law that you would go to jail, it's considered bribery, for the homeowner to work with you to do that. Now, there are there time. Not, so, but if you're going to do it, if you must do that, then at least get a bill of sale and buy something from the house. Okay, take an object in the house, you know, that they are wanting to sell because they're moving, mm -hmm. and, and 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 pay them money and get a bill of sale to make it look like you bought right. something and didn't bribe them to do it. Right. Because okay? if the bank okay. finds out that you're, uh, first of all, you can't. You know, I would almost I'm going to go ahead here and say I think it is fraud because on the HUD statement, OK, the approval letter says that the homeowner is getting zero dollars other than the three thousand on mm -hmm. the HUD statement. So you're absolutely not going to be able to pay them anything on the HUD statement because it won't get approved by the bank. And right. so if you're doing it behind the table, man, are you violating RESPA laws right. you know, where you signed that HUD? You know, I mean, if you're going to do it, you better darn well do it after it closes and not before. Right. OK, uh, so I would say, no, don't do it. Right. That, that, that's a great idea. I mean, buying something from them and paying them what you think it's worth, you know, some household furniture or appliances or or whatever it may be. But just think creatively. But, you know, be very careful with with the laws because you, you don't want to try to do a bunch of stuff under the table. You you really don't. It's, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it as I wouldn't do it as an incentive. I would do it because your heart wants to help that person right. out. Okay, right. they're in financial need. Don't be doing short sales with people that are just pissed off at the bank and they right. got the money and just don't want to pay the loan. I only I work with people that need my help. Okay, mm -hmm. you know um you know they're you know when I'm on the phone with them if they don't ask me how high to jump on the way up I don't mm -hmm. work with them. They right. have to be desperate. They have to need your help. OK, right. you, know, you have to have a heart to help them out. And right. so there, there have been times where now if, if you're going to do that and buy something, I even have them put it on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. So it's publicly shown for sale, you know, mm -hmm. and then I show up and I buy it, you mm -hmm. know, and I, and I get a bill of sale for that, too. Right. And you know, I did that with an 82 year old lady, you mm -hmm. know, who got really shafted by the bank, you know, and stuff and, and, and everything. And she just needed help. And so right. I, I did that, you know, one time, but it was, you know, it was, you know, like I said, well documented. Right. Got time for one more question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Phil asked, doesn't the deficiency get reported as income? <laughs> taxes? Great question. Uh, Mr. President Bush enacted a law that said if you're a homeowner, homeowner, it's un-American for you have to pay taxes on a deficiency that which is a loss on a loan. OK. Mm -hmm. And so that was extended and extended and extended. And, and actually, I'm not sure if it actually is still currently extended. But, you know, what you do is we say that we're not an, an accountant, not an attorney, and we can't really answer that question. They should seek out the advice of their own accountant. But here's what I will tell you that I see people do. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. and this is what, you know, I've seen people do is basically on the day of the closing of the short sale, if you document your financial situation, all of your assets and all of your debts at that moment in time, and you are insolvent, in other words, you don't have excess cash, then on your tax return, your accountant will turn in a statement that says you're insolvent on the day of foreclosure. Therefore, they do not pay any taxes on the deficiency. Okay. okay. That's what I've seen people do. You go to your CPA accountant, you know, Walmart, H&R tax and block guy, whoever you use for your taxes and you ask them about that. But mm -hmm. um, I have never in 11 years seen any of my sellers have to pay taxes, you know, on the deficiency that, that gets, you know, knocked down to zero. Uh, they don't have to pay the taxes on that amount. Right. Okay. Great information. Okay, guys, that is going to wrap it up uh, for this episode of Goat Talk today. Uh, David, we appreciate you being here. We've had a lot of people ask for you to come back and do a presentation. So I'll get with you as soon as we uh, wrap this up today and we'll try to set a date and let everybody know. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I appreciate it. I love teaching people. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to cut my rehabs down to five a year this year because I just mm -hmm. love you know, short sales and, and what we're doing. And, you know, if you got a question on a short, if someone out there is like active right now in the middle of one or mm -hmm. something, feel free to call me up. I love talking about it. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll listen to your situation and, and, and give you what I think might be the next steps. I'm not going to go and do your short sale for you, obviously, right. but, you know, I'll say, oh my gosh, yeah, I did one like that. And this is what that bank is going to do. And this is what that uh, VA type loan is going to do and, and, and just give you some pointers, you know, if you need help. So feel free mm -hmm. to contact me, phone, email, whatever. Okay. okay. And David's got his, his uh, website address up here, the David Randolph.com. So you guys can contact him. And of course he's going to be back uh, pretty soon to do that presentation. And yeah, let's teach some people yeah, the steps. Some people. Some short uh, sales. Yeah. I might learn something. I might not hate them so much. I don't know about that. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Okay. So hang out with me for just a minute, David. I'll be right back. We'll get wrapped up and uh, talk to you about coming back. So thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. All right. Okay, guys, that wraps it up today. Uh, remember, we don't give legal advice here. We, we teach you based on our years of experience in real estate. What works for us, what we're doing right now. And, uh, but no legal advice. We're, we're not attorneys. In case anybody wondered, we don't even play one on TV. Okay. So, uh, we appreciate you being here today and, uh, we're going to have David back sometime soon to just do an actual presentation for you on the short sale process. If you're in West central Florida, Jody and I are going to be at Sarasota, uh, real estate investors associated association meeting tonight. We'd love for you to come out. We'd love to meet you and uh, hang out with you for a little bit. So uh, if you're around, come see us tonight. We'll be down there. Uh, until then, get out there, talk to some sellers and buy some houses. Mm -hmm.